Do you always come across a stumbling block when it comes to thinking about festive color combinations? Well, I've got five here for you. These are all created using Distress Oxides and I'm going to run through the colors I've used for each, some blending techniques in there as well. I hope you enjoy these and let me know in the comments afterwards which one is your favorite. So the first combination is going to be one of greens and purples, probably my absolute favorite combination of colors almost ever, although I change my mind on a weekly basis. Um, we're going to start with Iced Spruce. So what I tend to do is two colors over uh, a panel, so almost the entire panel in two colors, and then I tend to add to the base of each of those colors in a darker shade, and you'll see that quite a lot through this video. But um, for this one, so that's going to be Iced Spruce, and probably milled lavender through the middle, dusty concord and pine needles on the ends. Now what I love about oxides is it takes no time at all to uh, blend them in, especially as that pigment element of the oxide sits on the top of the cardstock. So you can see I've filled half of my cardstock there with ice spruce. Then I'm going to go in with milled lavender as well. This one's a really soft lilac and I'm going to fill this half with this color. Now blending purple and green isn't always the easiest, so I'm going to be doing quite a bit of work between the two here, mostly with the ink that's left on my brushes from blending the backgrounds. So now I've got my base colors down, I'm going to go back in with pine needles on the base. Always coming back with the first colour to help blend that out a little bit more. And again, not adding any more ink onto my brush. I'm just using what's already in the bristles. And then Dusty Concord on the end of the milled lavender. In fact, Dusty Concord is a colour that I love to put against iced spruce. But in this instance, then the milled lavender just wouldn't work on its own at the top. I don't think, I think it was better to put the two paler colours next to each other in the centre. But I'm going to bring this one down quite a bit. So as always, just putting my water droplets on because I think you get lots more colour variation and some texture there as well. So there's a lovely frosty, snowy, cold background for your Christmas cards. It's a little bit contemporary, a bit different, not traditional Christmas, but I think it works really well. So let's go on to the next colour combination. For this combination, we're going traditional Christmas, red and green. So what we're going to do is work diagonally on this piece, just for a little bit of difference. Now I've got a lot of lumberjack plaid on my brush here. I'm going to put that all over the background, but like I said, I'm going to work diagonally. And just fade this out a little into the center. Now, obviously the risk with putting red and green together is always that you could get a brown in the middle. So it's just something you need to be aware of. So I always think that maybe not mixing the colors too much or not overlapping the colors too much is the best way to avoid that. So now on to Mowed Lawn, which is such a bright green. I love it. It does remind me of uh, kind of these two colours together anyway, remind me of like elves working together at the North Pole, all the greens and reds that you'd get. I just think it's beautiful. Now, if you really don't like the thought of the two mixing together and creating that kind of brown effect, you could actually leave a faded line between the two. I'm not going to do that. I'm now going to work up to the line carefully and then only try to mix the two together and around about an inch or so. So the circles that I'm creating with my brush here overlapping them is only going to be around a small area like so. Then I'm going to come in with my red which I know has an awful lot of red on it as well and I'm going to keep going back and forth until I'm happy with the color blends that I've got here. Because again, these are two completely contrasting colors that are just usually going to turn muddy, but they're so good being Christmassy. Um, I think it's well worth doing this anyway, but it does take a lot more work at blending. 
Now on the bottom of the green, I'm going to put a rustic wilderness, a much darker green, and this is just going to help blend in that a kind of muddy color that you may have got through when you blended the green and red together. And then on the end of the lumberjack plaid, we're going to be putting aged mahogany. Again, toning everything down so that you've got that darker shade, which makes the blend line just not stand out quite so much. There we go. So now we've got our aged mahogany at the bottom, lumberjack plaid through the middle, into mowed lawn and into rustic wilderness. This one I'm adding white splats of paint rather than the uh, water splat effect because these are going to show up as bright white much more. So this is another nice cool colour combination uh, working mostly with blues. I'm starting with a grey blue here. This one is Stormy Sky and I'm going to work this into Tumbled Glass which is a much brighter blue. These two just work so nicely together as well. So bringing that up to beyond halfway. I'm going to come back to my Stormy Sky brush and help that blend in a little. Now just a tip, if you do want something that looks like snow with sky in the background, this combination is perfect. Just mask yourself off where your snow line will be and ta-da, you've got it already there with Stormy Sky and Tumble Glass. But we are going to go into Evergreen Bow next. I'm going to come back to my tumbled glass because it's a paler colour. I don't want to bring that darker evergreen bow down any further and risk completely overriding the tumbled glass. So I'm going to use tumbled glass to blend up into the evergreen bow. Just by working in small circles back and forth and up and down, I will end up blending this beautifully without any harsh lines. Now the beauty of oxides as well is that they have pigment in them which sits on top of the paper rather than soaking in in the way the dye element does. And it's these pigments that you can really work at blending together and really overlaying each other as well. So you see there I've got the three colours blended nicely. Now you see these sort of almost tied marks. These are just where areas are drying. So I've just been working on this section so this is sort of like a damp edge that will all dry and that will all blend in beautifully together. Now I've not done any blending at the top yet, I'm going to add a pop of colour with Barn Door to make it look really festive. Again this is going to be going into a green so we could get that sort of that mix of colours there rather than a blend but I'm, I'm okay with that, I'm, I think I'd really like the pop of red anyway. So I'm going to bring the red down a little into the evergreen bow. and then go back with my evergreen bow brush. I'm going to need to add some more here. And again, just back and forth with each of the brushes until I'm happy that I've got a nice blend between them. For this one I'm doing a light mist of water spritz all over first of all to give it a mottled look and I'm also going to add some larger droplets of water too. Because this one is quite a strong colour at the top and very different colours I'm going to give it lots of texture to really start mixing those in. So really the colour blending is just going to be in the background. So pop that aside and let's look at the fourth colour combination. This next combination is another really cool one. It's actually quite a stormy sky sort of colour. I think it's lovely for Christmas, particularly if you were to pick out the blues on top of the speckled egg. So we're going to start first of all with Lost Shadow. So very often Lost Shadow, you don't see a great deal of it. Um, it's an ever such a pale grey. This is just going to go into the top. So it's almost going to act as a white there, almost. 
So I've got lost shadow. Then I'm going to go into speckled egg, which is of course another pale color. Now this one does of course have the hint of blue in it. So we are starting to work into some color here. I'm going to bring what's left on my brush from my lost shadow and just work that in nicely, but it's blended absolutely beautifully. Then we're going into iced spruce. So this is where we get a bit more color going on. So a bit more of a green blue. If you're interested in seeing any of these colors um, in more detail, I've actually got a playlist on my channel where I'm working through each of the Distress Ink and Oxide colors. And I'm showing you different color combinations with it, how it looks compared to other colors that are similar in the range and things like that. So go and check out, there is a playlist and I'll link that just up here for you so you can find that. And I'll also pop it at the end as, of the video as well. So just taking that lovely green of ice spruce into speckled egg, working across that blend line a few times. And then I'm going to go into a darker grey, and this one's going to be Hickory Smoke. This is very much a neutral, but really perfect if you're trying to do sort of snowy backgrounds. I'd like a bit more green in there, so I'm going to bring that green down in a moment. So I'm just going to add grey to all of the rest of this because I'd like to put some black soot at the end but I always find with the darker darker colors such as black soot obviously being one of the darkest um, it's much easier to blend that into or on top of a color to get a nice gentle blend rather than putting it directly onto the cardstock so coming back to ice spruce as I say I'm going to add a bit more of the green along here Lovely, and then going into that black soot, just on the very ends there. So just capturing the bottom, not even an inch here. Working in small circles just to blend that black in. Just a splattering of water there as well. Because these are lots of pale colours, the water's not going to show up too much on there. It's not quite as dark as others we've seen. But there's another sort of snowy, almost moody sky sort of effect, but perfect for your cold Christmas cards. So for the last combination, I thought we needed to bring some neutrals and some browns in because Christmas is all about your hot chocolates, your cinnamon and all those lovely natural flavours and colours and smells. So we're going with some browns with a hint of red in this time. So first of all, antique linen, which is a nice creamy colour. I mean, just imagine this is going to be the uh, cream on top of your hot chocolate. <laughs> so it's got a lovely warm feel to it as well. So just popping this on one end, then I'm going to go into a pop of colour, which is going to be the fired brick. So talk about warming things up. And that's going to work really nicely as well into the antique linen. So again, just putting down the first base, so the solid colour through the centre of the area that I want it, and then working on the blend afterwards. I never try to work on blending the two together while I'm add, first adding the colour. I put the colour down first and then work on blending it afterwards. Then we're going to work into the browns. I'm going to go into brushed corduroy first. And this is a lovely warm brown. It's almost got a kind of an orange tone to it as well. I really really love this one. Kind of reminds me of toffee and fudge. Two things I love to eat at Christmas. There's a lot of things I love to eat around Christmas time, but um, this one really does give me, um, kind of reminds me of all those lovely Christmas textures and foods and yeah, just yummy. So then going back with my fired brick and just getting that blend between these two through. 
I think for this one, rather than adding um, water splats or adding um, the white splats that I'd usually do, I think I'm actually going to go with some gold splashes on this one afterwards. We'll see that at the end. So I'll probably need to do some more work to this in a moment, but I'm going to go in with the last colour, which is Gathered Twigs, a much darker brown here. So for this one, rather than doing a few little splats of, of water and lifting up, I'm actually going to really put a lot of water on this and allow the inks to kind of move around a lot. Also helps, this is a great technique, if you find that your blending's not as perfect as you'd like it to be, maybe you've tried to mix two colours that just didn't want to mix. So on a surface, I've got my mat underneath my blending mat, I'm going to spray quite a bit of water over this. And I'm just going to leave that, so you can see there we've got a bit of movement of the inks. I'm just going to leave that now for a moment just to kind of let everything work and continue adding inks if, or water if you want to. But once that's blended itself, you can see it all working down here. It's absolutely beautiful. Now I'm going to take my heat gun and just add some warmth to this. Not enough to affect my blending mat underneath because of course that would warp and everything, but just enough to help dry this off a little bit faster. So definitely a few speckles of gold for this one. You can see you get that cloudiness as well when you um, add lots of water and then mix them together as I have here. I just think that's really, really beautiful. Um, lovely and festive, but also that would work for autumn or fall as well. Let's just pick that up and have a look at the gold. So the gold needs to dry. Once it's dry, as you can see from the sp smaller specks there, that will sparkle even more. So let's take a look at all five colour combinations. So there's five Distress Ingen Oxide backgrounds that you can be creating at home if you have these colours. If you don't have these colours, it's worth having a look at my Distress Incan Oxide colour chart. You can download this for free on my website. That's linked down below. Look out for the big capitals that says free and you'll find that. It's not filled in, but what you can do is fill it in with the colours that you have at home and then you can work out which colours are similar as you start to build your stash. There's also an overview chart as well that shows you all of the colours on one sheet already filled in for you. So you print that off at home with the colours on and then you can also have a look and see what colours are similar, and which ones you could replace any of these with if need be. So I hope you enjoyed this and some of you found it helpful. Let me know in the comments which one is your favourite and will you be trying any of these for your Christmas cards this year? I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel too and if you need to purchase any of your new Distress Inks and Oxides you can find a link here for that too. Take care everybody, I'll see you again very soon.